Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2020. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. Today we're going to be reading Jeremiah 30 through 31 and Philemon 1. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Restoration of Israel, Jeremiah 30. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Write in a book all the words I have spoken to you. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people Israel and Judea back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their ancestors to possess, says the Lord. These are the words the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judea. This is what the Lord says. Cries of fear are heard. Terror, not peace. Ask and see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Every face turned deathly pale. How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble uh, for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. So do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel, declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place. Your descendants from the land of their exile, Jacob, will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scattered you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. This is what the Lord says. Your wound is incurable, your injury beyond healing. There is no one to plead your case, no remedy for your sore, no healing for you. All your allies have forgotten you. They care nothing for you. I have struck you as an enemy would, and punished you as would the cruel, because your guilt is so great, and your sins so many. Why do you cry out over your wound, your pain and that has no cure? Because of your great guilt, the, and many sins, I have done these things to you. But all who devour you will be devoured. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plunder you will be plundered. All who make spoils of you, I will despoil. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, wounds declares the Lord. Because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. This is what the Lord says. I will restore the fountains of Jacob's tent, the fortunes of Jacob's tent, and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins, and the palace will stand on its proper place. For them, from them I will come strong of thanksgiving. From them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing. I will add to their numbers and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor and they will not be disdained. 
their children will be as in days of old, and their community will be established before me. I will punish all who oppress them. Their leaders will be one of their own. Their ruler will arise from among them. I will bring him near, and he will come close to me. For who is he who will devote himself to be close to me, declares the Lord. So you will be my people, and I will be your God. See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a driving wind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purpose of his heart. In days to come, you will understand this. Jeremiah 31 At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who serve the sword will find favor in the wilderness. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I will build you up again, and you, virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again you will take up your timbrels and go out to dance with the joyful. Again you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruits. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob, a shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. And they will come with weeping, and they will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water, on a level path where they will not stumble, because I am Israel's father, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. Hear the word of the Lord, you nations. Proclaim it in distant con. Uh, coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will deliver Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come and shut they will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord the grain, the new wine, and the olive oil, the young of the flocks and herds. They will be like a well-watered garden, and they will sorrow no more. Then young women will dance and be glad, young men and old as well. I will turn their mornings into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will testify, I will satisfy the priests with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. This is what the Lord says. Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy, 
So there is hope for your descendants, declares the Lord. Your children will return to their own land. I have surely heard Ephraim's mourning. Your disciplined, you disciplined me like an unruly calf, and I have been disciplined. Restore me, and I will return, because you are the Lord my God. After I strayed, I repented. After I came to understand, I beat my breasts. I was ashamed and humiliated because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Is not Ephraim my dear son, the child in whom I delight? Though I often speak against him, I still remember him. Therefore, my heart yearns for him. I have great compassion for him, declares the Lord. Set up road signs, put up guideposts, take note of the highway, the road that you take. Return, virgin Israel. Return to your towns. How long will you wander, unfaithful daughter Israel? The Lord will create a new thing on earth. The women will return to the man. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judea and in its towns will once again use these words. The Lord blesses you, you prosperous city and sacred mountain. People will give well, people will live together in Judea and all its towns. Farmers and those who move about with their flocks, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. At this I awoke and looked around. My sleep had been pleasant to me. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the kingdoms of Israel and Judea with the offspring of the people and of animals. Just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy and bring disaster, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days people will no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sins. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judea. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant though I was a hand and though I was a husband to them declares the Lord this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time declares the Lord I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive the wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is what the Lord says. He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, Will Israel ever cease being a nation before me? This is what the Lord says. 
only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundation of the earth below be searched out will i reject all the descendants of israel because of all they have done declares the lord these days are coming declares the lord when this city will be rebuilt for me from the tower of hano to the corner gate the measuring line will stretch from their straight the measuring line will stretch from there straight to the hill of jerob and then turn to goa the whole valley were dead bodies and ashes are thrown and all the terraces out to the Kiridon, Kiridon Valley on the east as far as the corner of the horse gate will be holy to the Lord. The city will never again be uprooted or demolished. Okay, that was Jeremiah 31, 30 and 31. Now we will turn to Philemon 1. Philemon 1. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dearest friend and fellow worker, as to Athia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to all the church that meets in your home. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanksgivings and prayers. Philemon 1, 4. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that you that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding for every good thing we shared for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Paul's plea for on, onism. Philemon 1 8. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none of other than Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you from my son Omenus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked, liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a following fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So, if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this word with my own hand. I will pay it back. 
not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more, prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Ephraim, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings, and so do Mark, Articatrius, De Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, be with your spirit. Okay, that looks like the end of the Bible with Briscoe 2024 today. We're going to be tuning... Tomorrow we will be covering Jeremiah 32 through 33 and Hebrews 1. Father, I just thank you for your word because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said... Amen. Thank you, folks, for tuning in to The Bible with Briscoe 2020. I have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here and I hope that you are too. <laughs>